Alright, so here's the equip window. Oh, sorry, Summer. I know you're not a black woman, but you are in this game, so deal with it. We have different slots for different items. We got, like, right shoulder, left shoulder, left, left hand, right hand. I mean, these count as places where you can store things, but she'd be carrying them. You got a belt, backpack, left leg, right leg. Now, this all, the more you put on her, the, you see up here where it says weight, you're going to get a shit ton of points added on to that. Like, let's put the cannon on there. Look, 35. We're already up to 35. So the more items you, the more items you put in here, the more this weight goes up, and that's pretty much her carrying capacity limit before she starts losing uh, stamina quicker than she should, and like she'll she'll just get tired out super easily. This shows the accuracy and the reaction time of the person. Now let me tell you a little something about reaction. Accuracy, we, we all know that that's a good thing. For reaction time, this can be a great thing, but also very problematic. Now the great thing about it is that, let's say there's an alien who is about to, you know, walk up to your person and kill them. They might, if your person has, if your soldier has enough reaction time, or has a high amount of reaction time, they might grab their, they might take out their gun and fucking just kill the alien right there on the spot without you having even, without it being your turn. And that's, of course, very useful. Now, the horrible, horrible fucking disadvantage to that is that, let's say your soldier is equipped with a rocket launcher. Let's also say your soldier is still on the ship and you have many soldiers around you. Let's say that your soldier sees an alien outside of the window, or your or your soldier may, and, and your soldier thinks, hey, why not fire at it right now? Or let's say your soldier is firing at a building that has more of your soldiers next to it. Okay, you kill them all, or you kill yourself. That's very bad when it comes to reaction. You do not want your character to react with explosives. You do not want them to be like that. So you give explosives and stuff like that to... You give explosives to characters who will not react so quickly. You do not want judges holding that shit. You know, extreme judges. So, Summer is equipped with a pistol. Malik is equipped with a pistol. We're going to remove this pistol from Malik and give him a rifle instead. So, put the clip in his belt, take that away, give him a smoke grenade, and he's set. Summer will actually hold the heavy cannon because she can carry that much weight. She's strong, she's fucking strong, she's a strong black woman. We're gonna put the smoke grenade in there and take out the pistol ammo. She doesn't need that. But she will need this ammo. Holy crap, that weighs a lot. Um, I'll probably take this grenade out. Maybe take... Yeah. Okay. So, she won't have any lights to throw or any smoke... Uh, oh, well, she does have a smoke grenade. But... Forget that. I can't remember if it's daytime or nighttime, so I don't know if I should have these guys equipped with the lights or not. We'll just stay on the safe, t safe side and have them equipped with them. Everyone else seems to be pretty good. I'll give Peter a smoke grenade. Why is there a clip in the backpack? That doesn't make sense to me. Um, I'm gonna take this grenade out. Give him a smoke grenade. Put it on his belt. Actually... Huh. Okay, put the clip on his belt. So all of them have their rifle clips on their belt now. I, I just prefer it there. It just makes more sense to me, you know? Unlike the, a game like Jagged Alliance where it actually would matter if it was in your backpack or not. Jagged Alliance is another um, strategy game and what's interesting about that one is that when you put stuff inside of your backpack, you actually have to unzip it during combat in order to take stuff out. And then you can zip it back up again, I think. But, I mean, that's it, that takes time units, or it, it just, it takes, um, 
it takes time time from your guys uh, yeah it, it just takes it takes time units so there's two more buttons I want to show you here aside from you know what these three have been doing obviously when you click on the rifle or the pistol or whatever it is and you see this button here let's say I'll click on that pistol see how it says there's ammo rounds left 12 here and shows a clip there when you click on that button with the pistol it will okay not do anything I guess it has to be equipped on the guy first let's try the rifle then so I click on the rifle and I click on that button there you go the clip was taken out of the rifle so now now this gun is empty and he has two clips but we don't want that we want to put the clip back in the rifle so you click on the clip and you click on the rifle and chuk chuk, good to go now the last button here uh, there, like if there's just if there's an overabundance of of things on the same tile then you're going to want to click this button and it will take you to a second page of all the other items that you can't see on this first strip here. Looks kind of like frets on a guitar, actually. God damn, that's, that's pretty abstract. Anyways, we're pretty set to go, I think. So we're going to click OK and start the game. UFO, turn 1, side XCOM. You're always going to start first. And we just press to continue. Excellent. It is fucking nighttime. Just what I wanted. Not really, but now you get to see how the electro flares work. So we're gonna send Summer out first. She's got the big fucking cannon. This is obviously the edge of the map here. Um actually let's take a look at what we got around us. Here you can see this gray bit here. That is definitely the UFO. Um, these are the wheels of the ship. It looks like the ship is gone, but it's not. I'll show you in just a bit why it's like that. And that's like dirt up there. So anyways, let's go through these buttons real quick. These two are not used right now. Eventually you'll get like hover tanks or like suits that allow you to fly and stuff like that. And you'll click these to go up and down in levels. Now these buttons correspond to those levels. When you click up on this, it'll go up and level, and up and up and up, and until you hit the top, and then it goes straight back to the bottom, and you can go up and down with these. This button here is, like, pretty much the map. Gives you a huge look on what's going on. You can go up and level, and it'll show you, like, the roof of the Sky Ranger, up again, level 3, up again, and it goes back to zero, and that's obviously Summer standing there on the ramp. Next button, uh, this is stand and crouch. This crouching improves your accuracy, and also I think it makes it a little bit harder for the aliens to hit you, but I could be wrong. This button here is like the inven is the inventory button again. When you go, ah, that reminds me. So now that we're back in the inventory, it's pretty much the same thing as when we were equipping everyone earlier. However, the issue is, is that now wherever you're standing is exactly what you're going to see. And okay, I don't understand why her weight just boosted up by a lot. What the fuck? Anyways. What you see on the ground is what's directly underneath your soldier. So all the items are actually right now are actually underneath Peter Besanoff, I think. No. Who's it under? It was probably right where Summer was standing originally. And I can move him up and take a look. Yeah, so that tile has every single weapon that we were equipped with. Um, and it's good that it's at the front of the ship, just in case I need someone to walk up and start equipping themselves. Only problem is, is that now when you choose to equip yourself, instead of before the mission began, it's going to cost time units to place them inside of your backpack, in your left hand, left shoulder, right shoulder. It would cost you time units to take stuff out and drop it on the ground. Everything costs time units now.